Okay, today I thought I would demonstrate how to configure the um, EPCO Festo cylinder using uh, FCT or Festo's configuration tool. The Festo configuration tool or FCT is the software application for configuring many Festo products including all Festo drives, the CPX and CMAX servo pneumatics controller, the CMXR robotic controllers, and the SBO high-speed camera. The first thing we have to do is go to festo.com forward slash US and in the search bar search FCT here you will see FCT and if you click software driver you will see the Festo configuration tool today we're going to be using the Festo configuration tool for the CMMO ST and all you have to do is simply click commissioning and it will download to your computer which I have already done to save us some time so first open Festo configuration tool and we'll come over start new project we'll call this EPCO video We're going to make sure that our system of measurement is metric today. You can choose imperial. Select the CMMO ST because that will be the driver that we are using today. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll call it Echo Demo. And we're going to use version 1.1 .1, um, because our driver has not had a firmware update. Okay, so let's create a new drive configuration. We're going to be selecting Festo Axis Motor Unit. Because we're using an actuator in a separate drive. If it was an integrated drive motor combination, we would have selected the other. Our demo is a 16 millimeter. It is the 8P ST E. The 8P is the pitch of the screw. ST stands for stepper motor, and E stands for encoder. Our actuator has a 100 millimeter stroke. Alright, so let's enter some application data. Today we're going to be working in valve profile mode. We don't have any load on the actuator, so we can leave that be. But our comparators, we do want to select position. Okay, we'll click next. 
Here you can see that the FCT automatically selects the maximum motor current based on the motor and actuator configuration. The FCT also automatically selects the under voltage level. If the intermediate circuit voltage in the drive drops below this value, example if the power supply is not functioning correctly, then an error will occur. Click Next. FCT automatically specifies the velocity, acceleration, and quick stop deceleration values. Let's click Next. We're using None. Click Next. We're going to be homing off of the block. And we'll just go ahead and use the default homing parameters. Click Next. We're going to leave automatic homing alone. We'll click Next. Let's go ahead and connect our Ethernet cable to our drive from our computer. Well, let's turn the power on. Let's click on network settings. When we're online with the controller, the IP address of the uh, controller is displayed. Hit next and it will bring you to where we can look at the controller gains. The gains are automatically calculated by FCT. Generally the default values will work well. These values can be fine-tuned. Go ahead and click next. You can see that FCT does 80% of the work for you. We'll go ahead and leave these default values alone. Let's click Next. These are the default values for job mode. And here we can start specifying values in our target table or our record table. Let's go ahead and set some values in the record table. We're going to go ahead and choose positioning to absolute position. We could choose positioning relative to nominal position or positioning to relative to actual position. Let's do a target of 90 millimeters and a velocity 400 millimeters a second. And we'll say our acceleration is. 12 meters per second squared. No additional load. Our tor torque feed forward is at 100%. And we'll call this fast extend. Third position, which will be an absolute position, we'll retract the 10 millimeters at a velocity. of 200 millimeters per second and 6 meters squared acceleration. We'll call this slow retract. Let's give ourselves one more position. And we will extend back out to 50 millimeters at 100 millimeters per second with an acceleration of 12 meters squared and let's call this that's on label
Okay, next let's go into our limits tab. Where you can see our jerk for acceleration is left at zero. If a start stop motion is very jerky, this value may need to be specified. Our force limits can be used to control how much force is applied when the actuator makes contact with an object. This can be used for pressing and clamping applications. Let's go ahead and reduce our press on label to 15%. Stroke limits don't apply in valve mode. Let's click next. Here we can set messages. This is where we manage our error codes. And we can also perform trace configurations and diagrams. OK, let's go online. When our button turns green, we have an active online signal. You can see that our IP address reads 192.168.178. Dot one, which is the IP address of our drive. Now we click download to download the EPCO valve mode project to the CMMO. Do you want to continue the download? Yes. Let's click store. Done in our workstation tab. Let's go ahead and click the operate button. Can move our bar up. We do not want to enable the device here. Here is the current dynamic data being displayed, and you can see that our actuator has not been homed yet. So let's click homing. Let's enable the device. Now that we're in homing, let's go ahead and enable our device. Let's start homing. On the manual move tab, we can jog the actuator manually based in single step increments. So let's change this to 10 millimeter, 200 millimeters per second. And you can see if we jog it, we will get one increment of this move at that velocity. We can also do manual control continuous jog. Now we can go back to our record table and execute our record. 